I'm Phil Van Stabern in Nichols Hills, where the city council is taking action on its traffic problems. I'll have a live report. Also coming up on Newsline 9, rescue efforts continue in the Japan Airlines crash. A federal report finds violations surrounding the fireworks explosion in Hallett, and we'll have this. I'm Terry Elliott. Authorities in Cushing suspect foul play surrounding the discovery of two bodies in a ditch. I'll have a report coming up next on Newsline 9. number one rated newscast in Oklahoma with Roger Cooper, Jennifer Eve, Sports with John Snyder, and Oklahoma's number one meteorologist, Gary England. This is Newsline 9. Good evening. I'm it's Joe Licker. Roger Cooper is taking some time off. And I'm Jennifer Eve. Thanks for joining us. The U.S. Department of Labor's Wage and Hour Division announced this afternoon the Airlex Corporation... Elliot is in the newsroom with more. Terry? Mitch, it all started about... ...when curiosity led two men to a lonely road and a grisly... Delivery. One week ago, some Cushing residents reported a... ...Sanford during a robbery at the amusement park. According to police, Sanford was called to the cash office at the park on his first night on... ...in the Garfield County Jail tonight after trying to get allegedly pornographic photographs developed at the Enid Grocery Store. Calvin Reedy was, has been arraigned on charges of lewd molestation and possession of marijuana. Investigators say they were notified by a Dallas developing laboratory about the photos of girls ages 9 and 11. Reedy was arrested. Kenna, you expect a minister to keep. Well, the Texas Attorney General has an opinion on that. It says a minister must reveal information about possible child abuse, even if the information... ...assembly with the JAL logo was found in a bay near Tokyo. They say without that stabilizer, a pilot does not have control of the plane. That theory matches the pilot's report that he lost control of the jet and was attempting an emergency landing. Mitch? Oklahoma City may have its own right-to-work law if a city councilman has his way. Ward 1 Councilman I.G. Per it's one of our leading problems, especially our residential burglaries. Uh, those daytime burglaries when the residents are away from their home at work uh, is when they're most vulnerable to being burglarized. Okay, so they stand outside for an hour tonight and we get some attention and publicity. What right. could be a long-term solution? We don't know exactly uh, whether this is going to pass. The indications we had earlier on were that the uh, recommendations had been approved, uh, at least uh, tacitly, by the city council. And we'll, uh, we'll know something by 6 o'clock, I would imagine. This is Phil Van Stabern reporting live from City Hall. Thank you, Phil. We'll still ahead on the 5 o'clock edition of Newsline 9. A new airline wings its way into the city. And Nelson Robinson looks to the skies at our chances for showers. We'll give you a look at the newest arrival at the Oklahoma City Zoo, and we'll have this. I'm Gan Matthews. A state senator says crowds of teenagers on the city's northeast side pose a threat. I'll have a report coming up on Newsline 9. Take a closer look at your Oklahoma Team 3 Volkswagen dealers. Ed Greer. And longtime civil rights activist Claire Looper say the situation is any wrong move could cause a riot. Now, concerned citizens have called a meeting at a business in that shopping center for Thursday night. Senator Porter says two things must be accomplished. The crowds of teenagers must be dispersed, and the teenagers must be turned to more constructive ways to discharge their energy. Jennifer Mitch. Thank you, Gan. When the fall semester starts, high school students will have more educational possibilities than ever before. Newsline 9 reporter Lola Hall says it is because of a historical agreement signed today by Area Votech Schools. These students are halfway through their nursing course. When they finish this year, they will be ready for their state boards and career as an LPN. They Tracking some storms in the state, his forecast is coming up next. Stay with us. So they are uh, showing some height. Let's take a quick look at flash track and see if we do have any lightning strikes. These are lightning strikes just in the past 60 seconds, and we do have a number of them in the same general area as that predominant line. As a matter of fact, stretching from north central all the way back into western sections of uh, the state. Nothing right on the metro area right now, but I think that will change as this line slowly moves east southeastward in the next couple of hours. Early morning lows were mar where six twisters touched down. A 16-year-old girl was killed when a tree fell on her as she tried to run for cover. Seven people are still listed in serious condition, but authorities say the casualties could have been much higher. 
The area is a popular recreation place full of campers where there are no tornado shelters. Mm. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a sad reminder that twisters can happen just about any time of the year. Yeah, yeah. Anywhere in the country, too. That's right. Except San Diego. <laughs> I always pick on them. It's just not true. <laughs> they had one a couple of years ago. Very unusual. We have some thunderstorms around the area, and we have a potential mess which is brewing down the Gulf of Mexico for people who have interest along the Gulf Coast. Let's take a look at uh, temperature first. 95 degrees, relative humidity 46%, the barometer 29.85, and steady. Our winds right now from the south at 10 miles per hour. And as we take a look at radar, we're looking and measuring rainfall here. We'll take a Doppler look in just a second, but we do have a... Well, we're going to do that first, okay? We do have some thunderstorms which are producing some gusty winds down in northern Greer County, southern Beckham County, right where the two meet, actually, in this region. Can't find any towns around that region, but uh, a couple of thunderstorms here uh, capable of producing wind gusts to about 50 miles per hour, frequent lightning associated with that. And another rather strong thunderstorm right now over Blackwell in uh, Ponca City region, actually, moving to the northeast at about 15 miles per hour. It had produced some pea-sized hail, according to the Blackwell police. And the possibility of seeing some heavy weather around Oklahoma for the next couple of days is going to be with us as we've got a cool front well to the north. Let's go back to the Met radar and take a look at uh, the rainfall amounts. Generally, you can see the band itself is not that wide. The intensity of some of the thunderstorms are coming down right now, but the threat of thunderstorm activity working in even the Oklahoma City tonight is definitely going to be with us with some spotty amounts around the rest of the state. We do have other thunderstorms which have popped up uh, basically because of daytime heating in eastern and southern sections. No severe weather at the present time, but we'll keep our eye on this storm up around Ponca City and Blackwell as well as the one down just to the north of Altus. Now, let's talk about our high and low for the day. Temperatures were somewhat muggy in many areas. Came in at 96 here in Oklahoma City. Our low this morning, 75. Normally, we're 93 and 70. The record, 107, set back in 1936. Record low, 54, set back in 1967. And temperatures right now range from 99 degrees down to Altus to uh, 77. A nice rain-cooled temperature over at Salisaw, everyone else in between. As we look at the satellite picture, you can see all the moisture stacked in the northwestern portion of the state. A cool front sort of bouncing back and forth in this region is going to continue to keep a lot of instability around much of Oklahoma. A lot of moisture still streaming in this direction promises at least to bring afternoon thunderstorms to portions of the southeastern sections for tomorrow as we slowly begin to work this front in this direction. It's not going to come racing through, but we'll continue to see an awful lot of this around. Heavier thunderstorms will be noted well to the north and beginning to pop up around the Gulf of Mexico as Tropical Storm Danny was born about an hour ago in the Yucatan Straits. is moving to the northwest at 10 miles per hour, so people from Brownsville, Texas, all the way around to Miami, Florida, are certainly paying close attention at this hour. You can see heavier thunderstorms around our region scattered around the Gulf of Mexico, and a strong line of thunderstorms in northern Kansas stretching back into Iowa, uh, topping out at about 52,000 feet. Potential for severe weather here uh, at this hour as things are not looking real good. Here's our stationary frontal system. It will continue to be bouncing through Oklahoma, scattered thunderstorms, storms mainly along the frontal system itself and then uh, temperatures a little bit cooler this evening because of cloud cover generally high 60s low 70s around the northwestern half of the state uh, and near the 70 or say upper 70s in portions of southeastern Oklahoma tomorrow more of the same the frontal boundary still there though we're slowly trying to wash it out a lot of moisture still working in and around the system back toward New England. And Tropical Storm Danny begins to work a little closer to the Gulf of Mexico. Thunderstorms becoming quite numerous around the Gulf Coastal Plain. High temperatures tomorrow in the 90s for much of Oklahoma and the high 80s in the northwestern areas. Cool 70s up through the high plains. So the five-day outlook will include a chance of thunderstorms Wednesday, Thursday, and then we're going to slide it slowly begin to break it for Friday. Now, this is if this tropical storm does not begin to move inland because it really can change the outlook Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. In the meantime, a little bit cooler as we try to get some drier air in here. Here's our forecast. We're generally looking for mostly cloudy conditions this evening around the state with a chance of thunderstorms and possibly some locally heavy rain. Southeasterly winds at 5 to 15 and lows will range from 65 northwest to 76 southeast. Then tomorrow, mostly cloudy with thunderstorms, locally heavy rain once again. Wind shift as a weak cool front tries to work through to the northeast at 5 to 15. Highs will range from a nice comfortable 85 degrees in the northwest to 96 in the southeast. And for Oklahoma City, increasing cloudiness tonight with thunderstorms possible. And there'll certainly be numerous during the day tomorrow. Low tonight, 74. High tomorrow, 90 degrees. Very good, and you're keeping a close watch on them for us. Yes, indeed. All right. Thank you, Nelson. Mm -hmm. Well, there is a new gorilla baby at the zoo. Word on a name yet. <laughs> 300 pounds. That's 300 pounds. Nice gorilla, right? Truth is stranger than fiction sometimes. <laughs> well, coming up next in sports, we'll have this. It will be 89ers and coral reefers at All Sports Stadium. I'll explain when sports comes up next. 
Back at the Washington Redskins reported the training camp today after holding out for three weeks. He spent most of his time with reporters talking about his off-the-field activities. Now, Riggins signed for 850000 Riggins of the Washington Redskins at the age of 36, probably his last year, but he will be missed by the reporters. There's no one else when it's <laughs> over with. Uh, high school football mm -hmm. practice started today, and we'll talk about that at 6 o'clock. Riggins was a guy who showed up at training camp one year with the Jets a couple of years out of Kansas in a mohawk haircut. Shaved all of his hair off except the, the strip right down the center of the head. Uh, <laughs> he's he's, character, uh, he's isn't he? a little strange, yeah. <laughs> but he's good. He does yeah. a good job. Thank you, John. When we come back, another new airline is flying into the city. We'll show you what it has to offer coming up next. Stay with us. Another airline is coming into Oklahoma City. Starting Monday, Fort Worth Air will be flying into Will Rogers World Airport. The airline, which originates from Fort Worth Meacham's Airport, will also be flying to Tulsa, Abilene, Austin, San Antonio, and Houston. The president of Fort Worth Air says there's a market to tap into here in Oklahoma City. Every airline nowadays has to have a reason for being, has to have a niche. Our niche is serving the 600,000 people on the western side of the Fort Worth Dallas Metroplex. They're the ones telling us that there is a lot of reason to come to Oklahoma City. The airline will have two round trips a day into Will Rogers until September 15th. The cost is $25 one way. And Tom told me earlier this afternoon that it's going to jump to $32 after September 15th. But that is neat that you can go to Fort Worth, because before, of course, you had to make that long drive. Yeah, if you live in Fort Worth, this is really serving a new area down there. That's a good route. Well, Patty, as a preview of our 6 o'clock newscast, she's standing by in the newsroom. Patty? Jennifer Mitch at 6 will find out how much it is costing us to stay safe. Newest figures on how much the city spends on crime are out. We'll have a look at them at 6. And if you have an old gray mare that ain't what she used to be, there are some kids in Edmond who would just love to be her friend. We'll tell you about that and how you might be able to help. Jennifer? Thank you, Patty. Turning now to national news, we'll have more on the survivors of that Japanese Airlines crash. Four people did survive the worst crash in airline history. The violence is also worsening now in South Africa amid talk of sanctions here in Congress. And forecasters in Miami are keeping a close watch on that tropical storm that may affect our weather here later in the week. As we switch live to New York and the CBS Evening News with Charles Kuralt. Good evening. This is the CBS Evening News. I'm Charles Kuralt, sitting in tonight for Dan Rather. When Japanese rescue teams reached the densely wooded mountain crash site of a... I'm Phil Van Stavern in Nichols Hills, where the city council has dealt with traffic coming through their town. I'll have a live report. I'm Tracy Bryan. Oklahoma City firefighters threatened to sue the city. We'll have this story and more coming up next on Newsline 9. Now, the number one rated newscast in Oklahoma with Roger Cooper, Patty Suarez, John Snyder Sports, and Oklahoma's number one meteorologist, Gary England. This is Newsline 9. Good evening, I'm Mitch Jellicker, sitting in for Roger, who has some time off. I'm Patty Suarez, and we thank you for joining us. State medical examiners say two men were shot to death before their bodies were dumped along a road near Cushing. Last night, two men discovered the decomposed remains of two bodies in a wooded area near the city. Tonight at 7 on KOKH TV 25. Reduced if Oklahomans send a message to legislators that their lives and freedoms are worth the extra money, there's a chance the justice <laughs> for all of us. Terry Elliott, Newsline 9. It's Sharks have been flying between firefighters in the city since the U.S. Supreme Court upheld the Fair Labor Standards Act. The justices ruled that government employees must be compensated for overtime work. Fires, of course, don't follow a schedule, so firefighters are forced to work weekends. Thank you, Tracy. Over half the city's police force will be going. The issue that has Oklahoma City drivers at odds with the town of Nichols Hills is scheduled to be resolved tonight at City Council. Newsline 9's Phil Van Stavern is standing by live. Phil, are we any closer to a compromise? Mitch, as a matter of fact, the city council just a few moments ago approved the recommendations of a traffic study committee, which uh, was dealing with the problems of traffic, uh, not just Oklahoma City drivers, but uh, traffic of all kinds coming through Northwest 42nd shortly after 4.30. It took firemen a half an hour to control the flames. Arson has not been ruled out, and investigators are still on the scene at this hour. And we will have more news after this. Stay with us. Now more than ever, people are noticing your body. 
Being overweight in today's competitive world can mean being passed over for promotions, exclusion from social activities. We'll find out what uh, tomorrow's weather will bring next. Stay with us. going to happen on Dynasty. Well, you may be surprised at what the new season has in store. In this week's Star Magazine, find out about Dynasty's last-minute plot changes, plus share secret pass. And <laughs> chances right now around 50 percent. Sounds okay. All right. Thank, Thank you, Nelson. You. A professional prospect is caught in the peril of drug charges. John Snyder steps in with more about the former OU shortstop next. At Red Lobster, you know you're getting only the freshest fish because the ocean... Together for others, youngsters who may face a temptation to do wrong, we can only hope they think twice before making a mistake that may stay with them the rest of their lives. And Greg Edge will likely never get a chance now to play in the major leagues, but Larry Boa did almost 20 years as a top-flight shortstop, but his career is now over. Boa was very tearful meeting reporters in Chicago today. The Cubs released him yesterday to go with younger players. Recognized as retired, the football season is right on top of us. The colleges will start practice in the next few days. Oklahoma State will start officially tomorrow. Uh, the high schools here in the state started today, all of them working out two and sometimes three times a day. Tony Sellers reports. X and Z run the same routes. X and Z run the same routes. Tight end stays in and blocks solid. Fullback swings, and the tailback steps over the middle. All of the state's prep footballers returned to the land of X's and O's today in anticipation of the upcoming season. Most teams are holding the usual two-a-day early morning and late afternoon workouts, but some, like the McGinnis Fighting Irish, are practicing three times a day until school starts. It's not that Irish coach Tom Ward is a slave driver. Today, there weren't too many complaints about heat or long workouts. The moans and groans will come when full contact workouts begin later in the week. Tony Sellers, Sportsline 9. In Major League Baseball today, Montreal beat Chicago 4-1. 89ers played Denver. The game is just underway a few minutes ago at All Sports Stadium. Highlights at 10. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. There is big news at the zoo this evening, but not as big as it will be. Up next, the latest arrival makes its television debut. Have you ever thought about what factors contribute to a bank's strength? Besides FDIC insurance, the true strength of a bank lies in many areas, all culminating... And it grows up to be, what, 300 pounds? Big. <laughs> big, big ape. Big. <laughs> Coming up tonight on the 10 o'clock edition of Newsline 9, we'll visit one of Oklahoma City neighborhoods participating in a national night out. They'll be fighting crime by being in the streets, and we'll tell you why they're there. See you at 10. Bye-bye. Hairstyles for the Channel 9 News team furnished by Logsdon Hair Designers. Newsline 9 is the number one rated newscast in Oklahoma.